if we have unity amongst all the Muslim countries, all the 57 Muslim countries, more than 2 billion Muslims, if there is an Interpol, international police, there should be an Islamic pole, Islam pole, that is Islamic police. If we have un unity in all aspects of life, and if some Muslim country is breaking the law of the Quran and Sunnah, the other Muslim countries can get together and correct the Muslim country. Why should we allow the non-Muslim to interfere in the affairs of the affairs of the Muslims? So if we have an internal check amongst ourselves, and our constitution should be Quran and the Sahih Hadith, if we follow this, inshallah, within a few years, within a decade, Muslim countries would be on the top. And irrespective of what's happening today, we find the question posed about the Muslim leaders and the Muslim countries today. There is one silver lining. The silver lining is that there is a hadith, there is a prophecy of a beloved Prophet Muhammad that towards the end of time, and if you go on my Facebook, I've started a series of the signs of the end of the world. Minor signs and major signs. And there are more than 80 minor signs out of which there are approximately 45 that have already occurred. And there are approximately 40 that are pending not yet occurred. And then there are 10 major signs. But towards the end of the world, a beloved Prophet Muhammad prophesies that Mehdi al -Salam will come, Isa al -Salam will come, Mehdi al, -Salam, Mehdi al -Salam would be the leader and the Muslims would rule the world for seven years. That would be the golden years for the Muslims. And that time, inshallah, they will follow Islam and the Khilafat again would be revived. And that time, whether you want it or don't want it, I want it or don't want it, this would be the best time. So there's a silver lining. I only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may we live till that time. When Mehdi al salam come, so that at least we will support him. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has given Basharat that that group of Muslims that will support Mehdi al salam they have been promised paradise. I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that may he come during our time, during my time, and I would be the first person to support him and would love to see how Islam flourishes. And we wait for the time till the time he comes. We don't know how long will it take. Few weeks, few months, few years, few decades, Allah Alam. What we should do? We should follow Quran and Sunnah and see to it that we force our leaders to follow Quran and Sunnah and the Muslims should be united on the ban of Quran and Sahih Hadith. Inshallah, again, we'll be a superpower. Sir Umar Abdurrahman was asking that can we shed more light on the Mahdi? The answer is no. We're going into a sequence, but I'll give you some highlight so that you would not mistaken anyone coming tomorrow i may come on the tv channel say i am the mahdi hallelujah prove it first of all the prophet has not told us he would be called muhammad like the prophet's name and his father his name is like the prophet's name abdullah so the mahdi must be muhammad ibn abdullah this is his name so if someone comes to me tomorrow and says listen i'm the mahdi i'm a i have a very long beard and very short thobes and maybe I have something on my forehead to prove that I've been prostrating for ages and hours and my name is Abdurrahman Ibn uh, uh, Ahmed. So I say, tough luck, no cigars. Why? Because the Prophet told us you have to be Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. If someone comes to me and says, my name is Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Al-Qahtani. I said, tough luck. Why? Because this tribe honorable tribe of Qahtan is not related to the Prophet and the Prophet said he is from my descendant so he has to be the son or originally in, in, in his uh, uh, family tree he has to reach to Al Hassan or to Al Hussein reaching to the Prophet the Prophet said that he would not be practicing and overnight Allah Azza wa would turn him into a practicing and pious and God-fearing. Not only that, that he would fill the earth, which means that he would have control, that he would have leadership. He would fill the earth with fairness and justice. So if someone comes and he's killed or he's imprisoned and he does not have these conditions, he's not the Mahdi. So 
is it wise that we sit back and relax and say, I'll wait for the Mahdi, and when he comes, I'll fight with him? No. Allah knows when he will come. But we know that he will come definitely at the end of the time because there will be a severe and grave and serious battle between the Muslims and the Christians. This is history. This, not, this is Sunnah. This is our religion. We believe in that. And this we will come, inshallah, to talk later on when we uh, talk about the great battles. And there will come a time when the Antichrist will uh, uh, show up and he will show up at the time of Mahdi. And Jesus Christ will descend from the heavens when the Fajr time is called and Mahdi is about to lead the prayer. When he sees Jesus, he retreats and Jesus says, no, it was established for you and you should lead. So he prays as an Imam and Jesus prays behind him. So all of this happens at the very end of time. So don't sit back and relax, work hard because your day of judgment takes place when you die. 